So can we go into the shields then? That one strategy would be the the Whipple shields. Can you kind of go over how those work? I think those are pretty interesting and not very like intuitive, I guess, initially. Yeah, you know what? They came up from tanks in in World War II. And so really what they were looking at is trying, how are they, can they shield tanks? And so they'd put this layer of aluminum or metal in front of and leave some airspace in between that and the tank to try and allow for particles to slow down and and so that they could impact and not and not crack through and so when we were building shields for spacecraft this whipple shield idea was already there in tanks and they thought well that actually is great for spacecraft because what it does is you have a thin layer of metal, you might fill it. Those are called stuff Whipple shields where, or it has air. So either you fill it with material, you fill it with air, and then you have some distance and you have another layer. And what it allows it to do is it disrupts the speed of that projectile. As it comes through that first layer, it slows it down enough that it can just impact and not make that cookie cutter and go all the way through. Um, so there's a bunch of really cool shield designs on putting through like Kevlar in the middle or something like that, that could stop the material. So it, basically all you're trying to do is slow down the speed so that it doesn't get to that high. It, so it's no longer a hyper velocity impact that it's the speed that the, that the shield can handle. And that's a trade of mass, right? Because like, say you can put like a lead wall around your spacecraft and that <laughs> just be heavy and you're losing mass. Right. Um, so is the point, it's just kind of something that I've been thinking about. Like, is the point of having that initial layer of Whipple shield that it takes a lot of energy to completely break a metal or put a hole in a metal to break all the bonds versus causing a dent in a thick material? Or Correct. Is that kind of, okay. It's a mass issue, right? And so what we look at is we might be willing to sacrifice that first layer in order to have a mass, because otherwise you have to have a huge thickness of, of metal and we can't fly that. That's mm -hmm. in, impossible to fly. And so what they've done is really looked at, okay, what could we do with, how do we slow down the particle? And, and we can, like we said, sacrifice that first layer in order to know it's not gonna penetrate all the way to the surface. And so the, the Whipple shield idea is to lose mass, but still be effective. So on the space shuttle windows, I guess, yeah. do they have some idea before they went up or was there, they consider like maybe some redesigns of how do we reinforce like still having windows in the shuttle now that we've seen that we're getting impacted regularly? Well, they do have three layers of windows okay. on the shuttle and the station. And so, but that was, as far as I know, that was not a debris thing. That was a pressure problem. You know, they were, it's, it's a window with an edge and, um, you know, probably the engineers didn't want to put windows in it at all, <laughs> you know, but you have a psychological effect of, of needing some windows. So they do have three layers, but the idea is that the, I don't think as far as the stories that I've been told is they were not expecting to be hit by paint flakes. You know, that was not on their radar as things were coming off. And it kind of makes sense. You know, when we were designing the shuttle, we were launching the kind of things that we were launching and people weren't, didn't know much about the space environment. And so they would just paint the outside of a spacecraft with white paint, you know, we need it white because we need some thermal control. And that material gets really brittle in space and can just flake off. And so suddenly that thing is going the same speed as the spacecraft, but maybe in the opposite direction because it's been perturbed. And so now you have a paint flake that's coming at you and it's not dissimilar to when you're driving down the freeway and a rock flies up from the tire of the one in front of you and smacks your windshield. And then you have a nice little crack in your windshield and then you watch it like propagate. Yeah. However, we're not sitting in an environment where it's pressurized and all the oxygen we need it's disconcerting when you're driving your car and you get this crack across your windshield. Can you imagine you see a little hole in your window on the space station and then suddenly you know that's the difference between you and breathing? <laughs> that, that, that probably raises your heart rate a little bit. So um, yeah, so that's the story that I was told when I first started is that the, the shuttle came back and they were like, what is this stuff? And they did tape lifts. So they they go out and examine the shuttle and they would do, they put tape over the holes and they lift out to try and determine what it was. And when they saw it was white paint, they're like, we might thus there starts my career of of mm -hmm. space debris and space junk because we needed to figure out what was happening. So 
just real quick on the Whipple shield. So say <laughs> your Whipple shield works on one impact and then now there's a hole in the first layer of shield. <laughs> Right. Are you, you're kind of just counting on the fact that these are so unlikely anyways that it's, a debris wouldn't hit the same spot and just go through and onto the next layer? Yeah, statistically, that's pretty. that would be pretty incredible for it to hit the exact same spot again. Mm -hmm. I mean, there, as much as this happens quite a bit, um, the, the likelihood of exact same spot is astronomical as far okay. as percentages. If you do, though, um, they will replace the outer edges of some of those shielding or blanket material if it's starting to look um, too, you know, so they'll go out on a, on a space walk and replace that kind of material on the station and, and on the shuttle, we would replace it when it would come back down in the Hubble, they do the same thing. We, they replace outer edges of the material for space environmental effects as well as debris impacts. Mm -hmm. um, other objects, as you know, you can't go up in service. So um, they have to be, they have to think about what they're going to do in that case.